Hello, my name is Jan Beccoloni and I'm the curator of the Ratnids here at the museum. Cheeseman was a real pioneer. She was born in 1881 at the same year as the Natural History Museum at South Kensington opened. She was the first woman who got a job at London Zoo in the insect house and she was the first woman who actually travelled on her own in the South Pacific, going to many regions where even men wouldn't travel alone. When Cheeseman was growing up she wanted to be a vet and in 1906 she applied to the Royal Veterinary College but unfortunately they weren't allowing women in. So Cheeseman took her passions elsewhere and their loss is our gain. Between 1924 and 1952, Cheeseman actually collected over 70,000 specimens that came here to the collections in the museum. Here is a tray of some of the specimens she collected. Um, this is a species of fly that was actually named after her. As well as collecting specimens, Cheeseman actually drew many sketches and made many notes to complement her work. Cheeseman actually went on eight solo expeditions around the South Pacific and related areas. Here's an image of her in 1949 in New Hebrides wearing a pair of homemade male sack trousers. She wasn't bothered about home comforts in the field. Um, on the contrary, she certainly didn't want things like sedan chairs that other women would have been carried around with. Cheeseman was always really keen to integrate with the local people and that actually paid dividends for her because they showed her secret paths in the forest. A good example of her integration is when she met a cannibal tribe in New Guinea. Such was their respect for her as a British person that they actually gave her presents to take back for the King of England. Surprisingly, Cheeseman went on her last trip at the grand old age of 73. She'd just had a hip operation as well, but she managed to get to the South Pacific. Cheeseman's legacy is multi-layered. Not only did she leave many, many specimens to science, she wrote lots of books for adults and children, she wrote many scientific papers, but she also provides inspiration for not letting bureaucracy get in the way of her dream. And her legacy was actually formally recognised when she was awarded an OBE in 1955 for her services to science.